Good evening. So tonight I am going to test out water-based markers on glossy photo paper. And I went ahead and I printed using a laser jet printer my image, which is something I drew onto this paper. Um, and I have a couple of types of water-based markers um, that sort of spam the gamut minus watercolor markers. So I have uh, Zig Brushables and Scroll and Brush, which behave a bit like pit pins in that they are pigment ink that is permanent once dry. And I also have Zig Art and Graphic Twin, which is a lot like Tombow ABT or Zig Clean Brush, um, and they are not permanent once dry. And on my Yupo test with water-based markers, the pit pins and the brushables stay in place, whereas the Zig Art and Graphic Twin markers uh, tended to they just bled out is what happened over the over like the month that they've sat they've just like flattened out on the paper and spread out in everything which i thought was interesting and i also thought it was relevant to you guys because they're both water-based markers right like what's the real difference well permanent ink non-permanent ink um and i thought it was worth testing both types out on paper so i'm going to go ahead and begin filling in the background using a Zig Art and Graphic Twin, and I'm gonna try to get it as dark as possible because the thing about um, glossy photo paper is um, once you put a mark down on it, it's not going anywhere. So you really wanna get it as dark as possible. And the reason I'm not masking this off, which would make it a lot easier, honestly, is because in my prior, um, photo paper video with the alcohol markers, I used Frisket and it left a sticky residue. So that tells me that Frisket and photo paper are just not compatible. And this isn't a particularly good photo paper. It's actually cheap photo sticker paper. Um, you may have even better results with the nicer photo papers than I am having with my cheap photo paper. So just keep that in mind. So something I noticed is A, with really wet markers like Tombow ABT and Zig Art and Graphic Twin, it takes a moment for the water to soak into the paper, um, shorter than it would take with um, many other paper types, but it still takes a minute. And also it makes the paper curl because, because it's wet and saturated. And while I'm waiting, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the alcohol marker example, just to show you guys. This is the one that had the frisket and it's still tacky from the frisket, um, leaving a sticky residue. So I highly recommend you don't use masking frisket on photo paper because it's going to leave that residue. And I'm going to allow this to dry and then I'm going to color in her skin using one of the Zig brushables. Okay, so my paper isn't fully dry, but I think it's dry enough that I can start working on her face. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing I did in the other video where I applied my pinks, or at least some of my pinks first, and then I put my skin tone over that um, and hopefully my pinks won't look overly garish. And um, going over this without that frisket catching on my brush, it makes it so much easier. It glides on a lot better. So uh, yeah, I highly recommend you don't use masking uh, frisket on your photo paper. I'm gonna keep saying this. I want my I want my my sacrifice to be worth something. So I used the lighter side of my Zig brushable to put down a light layer of blush. And now I'm going to use darker side to just sort of darken that up just a little bit, not a whole lot. And it goes on really pale. 
on this paper and I think that's because it's sitting on top of it. And I also have a lovely antique burgundy, but I don't think I ever swatched it. Let me grab a piece of paper real quick. Looks like that and that. It's a little too dark for her skin at this time. And pure red is also a little too dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the skin. And I think you guys can see from the background that um, it does show streaking, um, but if you color carefully and you work in with segments that are still wet, you can sort of pick it up enough that, um, you know, it's not really noticeable. And uh, this color, which is fawn, is a little bit dark for Kara's skin. So I'm just gonna have to be careful, but I honestly don't think I'm gonna be doing too many layers of it either. And I pretty much lost all my pink because the because fawn is such a dark color compared to it. So I may end up going over it with a darker pink. But so far, um, it's a little bit like coloring on a whiteboard in terms of streaking. Uh, there are some streaks. Uh, I will zoom in so you guys can see that because I think that's probably important to you is does this paper streak? I'm also not coloring super duper carefully because if I if it's gonna streak, I want it I want to see if it's gonna streak, you know. And I am using the lighter shade of fawn. I think I'm going to reserve the darker shade for her freckles and uh, maybe very specific shading. I think I'm gonna keep the shading light on this one. Although we do need to find out whether or not colors build up when you layer them. With the alcohol markers, colors don't really build up, so you do need a range to be able to build up to. Um, I recommend at least three colors for every color you're trying to build up. With these, they might actually layer. We'll find out. Okay, so your water-based markers will indeed layer. There's not a huge difference, but there is some, which makes them a little more flexible. But my paper feels kind of gummy, and I'm wondering if maybe the water reactivated um, the, because I'm working on it where it, yeah, wow, where it's still basically wet. I didn't really give it any time to dry. I'm basically treating it like I would alcohol markers and I'm not getting any layering on the areas that are still wet. So I'm gonna allow it to dry and then I'll try doing another layer with it. All right, it's been a couple minutes. Let's see, yeah. All right, so um, with water-based markers, and this may also be true with alcohol markers, I'm gonna have to redo my test um, with the alcohol markers because the frisket kind of made everything hard to tell. Um, it does seem like if you give it enough time to dry, you can do another layer and it's not supposed to feel gummy. So don't work through the gumminess. Um, I am getting some streaking like under her neck. I wasn't really being as careful with application as I should have been. And her legs are still too dry. I mean, too wet, dang. <laughs> too wet to be able to finish them for right now. So I will go ahead and I actually want to, I might regret this because this blue is, yeah, blue is darker than I thought. I'll go and do it with gray. I wanted to add a little bit of shadow to her eyes because they would look weird without it. And I think I do need to use both types of pens in this. So I'm gonna switch over and do her hair and her eyes, at least for now, with the uh, Art and Graphic Twin. 
and that is the wetter non um, indelible when dry marker. Both of these types of markers are part of the Zig memory system, and that's sort of like a color matching system that uh, spans all of their products. And Faber-Castell has a similar color matching system that also spans all of their products. I just bring that up because I think it's pretty neat when you can do color matching across like color pencils, um, alcohol markers, water-based markers. I know that sort of thing is important to some people. Um, I tend to uh, just sort of swatch my colors to see how close they are. But, um, you know, having something that's already in place is really helpful too, and it saves you some time. So, the hair, because I put it down with a marker that's a lot wetter than um, than these brushables. Oh, all right. Legs are kind of weird. It seems like the super wet um, art and graphic twins have no problem going down on this paper. Um, Although I haven't tried layering them yet, so that could be like a different, a different issue right there. I will find that out soon enough. Um, now it is time to do her shorts, and it seems like I have more fun, vibrant colors in the brushables, so I guess that's what I'm going to grab for right now. And I'm going to let it dry before before I try to apply any sort of shadow to it. And gosh, it just feels like a yellow day because the first thing I grabbed was the yellow. I think I'm actually gonna grab the scroll and brush, which is, um, it's got the same properties as the brushables, except one end is meant for calligraphy and it's got a split and the other end's a brush in, so it doesn't have two colors in the same marker the way brushables do, but um, brushables have gotten kind of hard to find and I know the scroll and brush uses the same ink. So I picked up some scroll and brush markers because I wanted to expand my brushables collection. And I'm just coloring the way I normally would and I am getting some streaking in there. It doesn't bother me so much, mostly because this is just a marker test. I'm not trying to do anything specific with this illustration. Did I grab the... I think I grabbed the darker end. Yeah. Doesn't... Oh yeah, I did. Oh, you can actually kind of blend it if you act fast, so... That might be something to take note of. I was having some difficulty doing blending and layering with the alcohol markers. I think it has something to do with the coating on this photo paper. And it could be um, all glossy photo papers, but this is kind of a cheap photo paper. Like When I say kind of, I mean there, it really is a cheap photo paper. It's not nice photo paper at all. Um, I would love to go back and try a nice photo paper at some point in the future. I had some um, and my little laser jet printer wouldn't accept 4x6. So um, even though it was uh, photo like printer photo paper, so, um, I know some companies do make glossy cardstock. I think Ranger does. And I remember reading in the Amazon reviews for it that uh, someone was complaining that it's basically just overpriced glossy cardstock. So, I think I have some from a sample pack. Unfortunately, I think it is pretty much the same size as uh, the 4x6 that I couldn't get my printer to take. And I don't actually know if Sailor Mitsuo Ida Ink will ever cure on, um, sorry, I'm trying to find the right cap, will ever cure on photo paper. So uh, I have been relying on the fact that toner 
seems to play nicely with both um, alcohol markers and water-based markers. So... It's nice to be able to use my computer and my printer to get some of these tests knocked out. Also means uh, I don't have to tear, well, I did have to tear it out of my sketchbook to scan it. I guess I didn't have to. I did tear it out of my sketchbook to scan it. And um, like I said in the video for um, the marker test, a, this is on sticker photo paper, so um, I could take this and put this on like a sketchbook or adhere it to a card. Um, it's basically, I mean, it's a sticker. So this is a way you can do sticker, like um, you could use a digi stamp, for example, and print out the design and then marker it. And I know many of you, many of you guys do that and then include it as a sticker, like on the envelope or to seal the envelope, um, you know, or you could decorate like a scrapbook with it. Or, I mean, what I would have done, I know some of you guys are still in school is I probably would have decorated a binder with a bunch of these, or you could like decorate your planner with it. All right, so I think her skin is dried enough that I can apply some freckles with Fawn. And this is the darker side. And those streaks on her neck actually look like freckles, which was one of the reasons why I wasn't even concerned about it. I'm using Fawn to sort of darken up some areas. And basically, I have a feeling that if brushables work on a paper, pit pins will work on a paper. I do probably need to do a test with the pit pins before I tell you guys definitively you can use pit pins on photo paper. So keep an eye out for my pit pin and photo paper test. And if you enjoy these compatibility tests, if they've helped you out any, or if they've inspired you, please leave a comment, consider subscribing, and maybe check out my Patreon. Because you can help fund even more content like this, and patrons get deciding votes in what I work on. And my current batch of patrons seem pretty chill. Uh, the biggest request was continue doing blog written tutorials, which I can do, and uh, more comic stuff. And I'm recording this in April. I have no idea when it's gonna go live. But comic um, April was when um, a bunch of my Kara stuff went live because they wanted comic content and I'd been wanting to make comic content for them for a long time. So if you are interested in comics or if you're a comic artist, you should check those videos out. Um, they're in their own playlist. I think it's called Comic Craft because that's what I do for a living is I make comics. In fact, that's what this little girl comes from, my comic 7-inch Kara, which is about a miniature girl's big adventures in the big outside world. Alright, so I picked a color that was kind of too dark, but I'm going to try and blend the two using the color I put down before. And see if that leads to regrets. And I'm not using any blender specific markers. I know with these videos, sometimes you'll see me pull out like a Tombow ABT colorless blender. Um, I'm not doing that with the photo paper, uh, mostly because the way those kind of blenders, like the Tombow blender works is it's a glycerin blender. And I just don't see it considering how quickly this is absorbed by the paper. I just don't see that working. All right, 
So I'm kind of going over it while it's still wet with the prior color and I am able to blend. So all you blendaholics rejoice. You can with the, um, with these, the art and graphic twins and probably with Tombow ABT with these wetter, juicier sort of uh, water-based markers, you should be able to blend your colors using your colors. You probably don't need an outside blender unless you're starting from like blank white and then you probably need a colorless blender. But there. Okay, so um, unless there is a huge color migration, I dare say the Art and Graphic Twin, that's these over here, let me pull out a little bit, handles better on this paper than the drier blendables. And I may need to go back and do a test with just the Art and Graphic, um, yeah, with just the Art and Graphic Twin. And I definitely do need to do a pit pen test. Um, and I, I'm really <laughs> signing myself up for lots of tests. I really want to redo the marker test too without the masking frisket to see if the gumminess on the paper is also part of the paper. So this is alcohol markers. This is water-based markers, a mixture of brushables and Ziggin Art and Graphic Twin. Um, they both handle on uh, glossy. I'm trying to get to catch the light so you can see, yeah, glossy photo paper. Um, they both have their strong points. They both have their weak points. I look forward to playing with these more in the future. I'm Becca Hilburn. I hope you guys found this video useful. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you found it inspiring. I hope you found it interesting, at least. If you did, please remember to leave me a like. Um, consider subscribing to my channel. Lots of content like this coming up. Lots and lots of marker paper compatibility tests. And if you'd like to help fund content like this, because it does get kind of expensive, please check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you later. Bye.